Hi everyone! In this video, I won't be creating any new shader. Instead, I'll show you a trick for easily generating 2D sprites from 3D models in Godot Engine 4.4 or higher. So, let's get started. As I mentioned, you need to have Godot Engine version 4.4 or higher installed. That's because we'll be working with the export tool button tag, which was only added in this version of the Godot editor. So I have Godot 4.4 ready, let's get to it. I've already successfully tested this technique in a new game I'm currently working on. However, I think it'll be better for the purposes of this video to start from scratch and create a new project. So I have an empty project here in front of me. First, we'll need a scene that will handle the actual generation and that scene will be a simple sub viewport. Let's add it to the project and name it something like Sprite Generator. So right click, create new scene of the node type and I will find a sub viewport. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, pick and as I said, I'll call it Sprite Generator. Okay. Very well, this sub viewport will display a 3D scene and to have something to display, I imported an asteroid model that I once created in Blender. We'll create a scene from it and save it to the project. So here it is in a GLB format, exported from Blender. Right click, new inherited scene, yeah, here it is. So I'll just press Ctrl S and call it Asteroid TSCN and save. Great. Okay, let's go back to the original sub viewport scene. Uh, here it is. And let's add Asteroid TSCN as a child node. So I will simply uh, drag it, here it is, drag it to the root node. Okay. And this is how we'll add everything we want to display and export as a sprite just to this, uh, to this scene. When we click on the root node, Sprite Generator, which is sub viewport, uh, we can see a preview window in the inspector this square. It doesn't show anything yet because there is no camera in the scene. So let's add a camera 3D and move it a bit along the axis to better capture our object. Right click, add child node, camera 3D. Okay, something is already uh, here, but I think it would be better if we just move it outside the asteroid and display it. Okay, uh, we can continue adjusting the camera to fine tune the view as needed. By the way, the camera is set to perspective by default. If we prefer orthogonal, which might be better for sprites, we can switch it in the inspector and increase the size parameter. So it sits here, projection, let's change to orthogonal and change the size to something bigger. Yeah and we can see our asteroid right here. Great. Uh, let's click back, click back to the root node, subviewport. In the inspector, we can see that the scene is displayed with the default sunlight and environment, like this blue sky or the brown ground. This is due to these active toggles over there in the 3D editor. So uh, we can change their parameters by clicking on these three vertical dots, and modify the light color environment properties or add them to the scene and adjust later. But for now, uh, I think it will be enough to set a transparent background for the sub viewport like this. Here, transparent BG, let's set it to on and it is perfectly transparent, everything behind the asteroid. Okay, the last thing we want to set before we finally get to the generator is the image, dim the image <laughs> dimensions that we want to generate. To do this, we just need to change the size parameter of the sub viewport as the default values 512 by 512 might be a bit too large. So I'll set it to 128 and 128. 
Okay, let's save the scene, Control S. And we will add a script to the root node. So I'll click here and just create this script. It opened in the editor. And first, it's necessary for this script to have the tool annotation. Let's put it here. Tool. Because if we don't add it, the following code won't work. And now, finally, we'll use the export tool button annotation, which requires a parameter for the name of the button, like this export, export tool button. Here it is. And the parameter, let's call it generate sprite. OK. And we also have to add a variable. So var can generate sprite. All right, and we can already see the new button generate sprite here in the inspector. However, it doesn't do anything yet. Now we need to assign a function to the variable, which will be triggered when the button is clicked. I'll make it an anonymous lambda function, which will print some text to the console. So let's extend it by generate sprite is func with no parameters, and the body would be simply print, uh, let's say, clicked. OK, save the scene, and let's click the button. I will open the output console. We can see it here, and click. OK, it looks like we've got an error. This is caused by Godot, because for some reason, uh, it doesn't immediately propagate changes for export tool button. There is already a bug report for this in, on GitHub, so it's possible it will be fixed in future version of Godot. But until that happens, we'll use a simple workaround. In the main menu, here, let's open a scene and click on Reload Save Scene. OK, and now let's try clicking the button again. And we have the expected result. The text clicked appeared uh, in the console. Great, but we want to generate an image. So let's delete the line with the print and replace it with this code. Get texture, get image, and save it as PNG. Here, PNG, and I'll put it to the user workspace. Now let's call it, for example, Sprite PNG. OK, and since we changed the code, let's save the scene and reload it again, just to be sure. Scene, reload, save scene. OK, and I'll click the button, generate sprite. Cool, no errors appeared here. I'll just clear the console. And the image has been generated, but where is it? Since I used the user prefix, uh, we need to look for it in the user folder of our project. We can easily find it by going to project and selecting open user data folder. OK, and here it is. We can see our sprite. Let's double click and open. Yeah, it's definitely an asteroid. And the dimensions are 128 by 128, just as we set in the uh, subviewport uh, sub -viewport settings. Very well, and with that, we have the basic functionality done. So if we want, for instance, to create an icon for game screen, we can simply insert the desired model into this scene, press the button, and we have the result. Of course, we can make additional adjustments beforehand, such as changing the lighting, adding more light sources, or rotating the model as needed. This actually relates to the second part of this tutorial. So let's assume we have an asteroid model, this one, and we want to create a sequence of images for an animated sprite. We'll improve our script by adding several parameters and new lines of code. First, the parameters. We would like to generate an image with the individual animation phases arranged in a grid. So we need to know the number of rows and columns. Let's add it here. Export var rows, type is integer, and let's start at two rows. 
and similarly for columns where columns int and let's say six columns would be the default value uh, uh sorry in not no emit well but we don't see anything uh we don't see the new parameters here in inspector so let's save the scene and reload it again now it's here great uh we can continue our animation will be simple we will just rotate the asteroid around its axis so we'll define the model for the animation and the rotation angle okay i will comment out this line and add a new code so as i said we need a reference to the model where model is and i'll just drag the asteroid node right here and var angle let's start at zero no rotation now we'll prepare the final image where we'll insert the individual animation phases however we need to know the dimensions of uh, such an image and we can easily calculate them using the size parameter of our subview port it will look like this uh, let's call it a result a result and we will use the image class and the method create empty and now we have to add width height and other parameters so we'll start with the width it would be size.x size of the subviewport and multiplied by the number of columns similarly the height is size y multiplied by rows okay and now map maps i think we don't need them so let's use false because uh, for the simple sprite definitely it's not necessary to generate map maps but what about the third parameter which is the image format it must be the same as the format of the image of the image obtained from the subview port otherwise the following code would throw an error from the blitrect method we'll get to that fortunately we can easily find out the right format like this uh, let's put it just to this a separate line var format is get texture get image get format simple and let's use it right here perfect now we'll generate the individual animation phases in a double loop and insert them into the final image at the correct positions let's continue with coding so as i said double loop so four r in rows and for c in columns let's do this first animation so modal rotation I think that it's the y-axis. Let's just make sure. Yeah, the green one is y. We are rotating around the y-axis. Okay, and this is the uh, the value of the angle, which start at zero, but we will then change it. Okay, now we need the current image, the current um, screenshot of the subviewport, which is as we know, our image is get texture get image okay and let's copy this image into our resulting image which is as i already mentioned the function blit rect result blit rect and we need the source image which is our image then we need a rect 2i source rectangle and we just want to copy the whole subview port so the rectangle is simple it's rect 2i with parameters 0 0 and size x size y and the final one is the target is the destination simply a vector 2i uh, two dimensionals uh, two dimensional coordinates in the target image so it would be vector 2i with parameters size x times c and size y times r so it will uh, just reflect the current row and column of the grid we are creating 
okay what exactly is not ah sorry size 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 something is there dot is missing here okay perfect and finally let's not forget to increase the value of the angle as we know uh, an angle of size 2 pi also known as known as tau makes a full circle and we want to create all phases of the full circle rotation so if we divide this angle by the number of animation phases which is simply uh, rows times columns we'll get the correct increment for one phase of rotation let's do it angle is increased by as I said, tau to pi divided by rows times columns. Perfect. And of course, uh, yeah, the image is ready. Let's save it. So it would be a result, save PNG. And again, let's put it to the user uh, workspace and call it, for example, Atlas as it's similar to a texture atlas for animations. Okay, and of course, let's not forget to save the scene and reload it. Reload saved scene. Then we'll click the button right here and something hopefully was generated. Let's take a look at the result. I should have it already open here. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, something is wrong because all the animation phases look all the same. So what's the problem? Well, our script is too fast and doesn't wait for the subviewport frame to be redrawn with the updated content. We can solve this by simply waiting for that frame. I will add this line after the modal rotation change. So let's just close his and here we need to put a wait rendering server <coughs> and the event is frame post draw very well let's save just to be sure reload and click again generate sprite and let's take a look now it is correct exactly what we wanted great result and what if we change our minds and want more animation phases we can simply change the rows and columns in uh, the inspector and click the button again. So let's say we want 36 phases in a grid six by six. Six, generate sprite and open. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this technique will be useful too. Regarding the animation, we of course used a very simple example, but a similar approach could be applied if the animation was controlled by, for example, an animation player, where we would set the current position on the timeline. But maybe that's for another time. For now, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.